you then. Thank you very much indeed, Deepak. Uh, welcome to Work Package 2. Uh, alongside of Laurie Yates and my colleagues, who you can now see on screen, I'll do my very best to introduce the personnel and a high level of what we're doing. Uh, I will apologize. You cannot see my face except on this slide, which is probably a good thing. Uh, I've had to connect by phone because of local circumstances. So to the left, Dr. Laurie Yates, who will introduce herself in a few minutes. Eugène Van Pijenbroek, who likewise will introduce himself. My name is Dave Lewis. I'm the qualified person for pharmacovigilance, a grand title. Really means I take care of patient safety within Novartis, a pharmaceutical company. And to the right is our colleague who's based in the US, Chris Bond. He's an epidemiologist researcher um, working within Bristol Myers Squibb. We have a large team, 40 people, multidisciplinary individuals, scientists, physicians, research workers, aiming to try and improve where we are on safety of maternal health and neonatal health where medicines are involved. So first thing to return to you is to show you who you are, who is attending today. In terms of our, our registration numbers, they were almost 500, and we have close to 300 people I know online. About half are from the industry. I'm really pleased that we have people who classify themselves as parents. I'm a parent. I have two children, and they keep me entertained. We have regulators, healthcare professionals, researchers, all the key people who will support our work. What I'll try and do next, and this may take just a second, is play a video just to demonstrate. What I tried to do here is plot the numbers and where all the att attendees are based. You will see we're centered on Europe, but we have good representation from the Americas, particularly North America, representation from South Africa and some African countries, India and the Middle East even Australia and New Zealand. But I, I will stress our real focus is Europe and our next slide will show you why. Europe is really the center of our funding. We are funded by a large grant, just over 25 million euros from the Innovative Medicines Initiative. The actual monies come from European government, 50%, and from the European Pharmaceutical Industry Association, 50%. We launched our, our scheme, our project called Conception, April 2019. We're just over halfway through our five-year research work. So what are we doing? How are we doing it? We have an independent scientific and ethical advisory board. They really steer us in directions that should benefit patients. And our, our aim is to improve public health across the whole of Europe. Work Package 2 is the one I will focus on. We're looking at data from the source, direct from doctors, pharmacists, mums, parents-to-be. So anywhere we can collect data with consent, we will do that. And what we're trying to do is build some clear definitions, statistical methods, and good methods of communication with support and with the intent that everybody works together collaboratively, whether industry, researcher, academic, or practicing clinician, and provide, disseminate, send education and medical information to anyone who wants good, reliable, trustworthy data. In terms of specifics, there, there were questions that we wanted to ask ourselves. And these are questions we all felt were relevant to us. Uh, as I explained, I'm a parent. When my wife was pregnant, we had to make decisions. Should she receive a vaccine? And today, I'm sure you're all concerned. We know there is good evidence that COVID is highly risky if you become infected when you are pregnant. 
So what medical information could you receive about COVID vaccines? Do you trust that information? Is it biased or is it truly unbiased and trustworthy? And where can you get that information? Those are really the important questions. In trying to answer it, we set ourselves some high-level objectives, which were all around improving the information that is out there, trying to identify and catalog sources of data so that we can manage them consistently, trying to characterize data sets so that we can group related reports of use of medicines in pregnancy. And having started to establish some methods, prove them, show through real world examples that there are benefits to pregnant women and particularly to the newborns as they grow into infancy. And then really just trying to give you something more tangible. What have we achieved? Well, we've started to build some protocols. And what we're trying to do here is, what we're trying to show is in five main areas, the work that we're doing with formal clinical protocols, conducting research around data quality, how can we gain good quality reports around a very sensitive topic, health and medicines during pregnancy. We're then looking at a particular disease focus around multiple sclerosis, where chronic treatment is needed, perhaps through the whole of pregnancy. We're looking at child development, and you'll hear from Rebecca Bromley about some pioneering research that she's doing. We'll also look at risk factors for mum and baby, and Laura will walk you through those risk factors. And then last but not least, how we conduct medical assessments of the data that we gather. So I will pause at that point, hand back to Deepak. I will say a big thank you to Amalia for supporting me with those slides.